Hey guys, uh, Ben Pollock here with Matt Haddon. Yes, sir. Who is the uh, owner, not not founder, but owner, the head guy behind Pioneer uh, Powerlifting, Pioneer Belts, General Leather, General Leathercraft Manufacturing. That's it. And we're here at his headquarters, seeing how all the belts are made, uh, everything that goes into the process. Not only the belts, but also the wraps, the straps, all the accessories. It's all handmade, um, and we got to meet the people who do who are doing it, which is pretty, pretty incredible. But I wanted to talk to you guys today with Matt about specifically the Pioneer Cut, which is a new style of buckle belt that allows for more granulated spacing, right? So you can get the belt tighter or looser. Uh, you're not limited to one inch measurements. So Matt understands this stuff much better than I do. So he's gonna explain how they uncovered the product and how they kind of solved it. I'm gonna say, why it's actually helpful for you as a lifter. Yeah, so essentially everybody has this problem that has a prong belt essentially, and even lever belts as well. You can never get it to the correct tightness. Either you're too tight or it's a little bit too loose. So um, the, that issue has been brought up to me on customer service level hundreds of times uh, so over the last five years that I've been here. And you know we really could never figure out a way to fix the issue. Um, we had a guy that was um, in a forum, Exodus Strength, I believe was the forum's name. Uh, kind of, a, it was a spinoff or a break off from the Starting Strength forums with Mark Ripto. Uh, good couple of guys uh, reached out and said, "Hey, you know this guy Steve? He's got this idea on on how to uh, fix this issue that everybody's having about being too tight or too loose." Um, and you know, we worked with this guy. His name is Steve Strom, and he's a super nice guy. And very smart as well. Anyways, he came up with this staggered hole design. You know, hey, why don't you just you know figure out to have holes in between your holes? I think as Alan Thrall said in one of his videos. Um, and essentially, you know, the idea was there. I was it got thrown onto my plate to figure out how to make it work. And um, essentially, the, the main thing about this isn't really the holes that you guys see. It's actually the buckle side of the belt itself. Essentially, the buckle slides up and down on the shaft of the buckle itself, or the prong does, I'm sorry, it slides up and down on the shaft of the buckle itself, which allows for the prong to not be crooked as it's going through the belt. So essentially, you don't want your prong, you know, for the longest time, essentially, belts, holes being off-centered was a huge issue. It was a problem that everybody in the manufacturing space has, has come across. Anyways, now we've <laughs> we've made all 20 holes or 22 holes um, off-centered. But with the, with the buckle being able to slide, the buckle, the prong itself doesn't have any sort of added tension. Um, and it allows for the belt to function the way that you guys are used to a belt functioning um, at a higher level, essentially, because you don't have the one inch spacing that most everybody's belts do have. Um, you know, I've been asked multiple times, hey, why don't you just make the holes closer together? Well, you can't really make the holes any closer together um, because there has to be enough leather in between those prong holes or the, you know, with the intra-abdominal pressure that you guys create through using these belts. If you don't have enough leather in between the holes, it rips, right? You see it on all those Vallejos and Harbingers and just, you know, belts that are made with not as good of leather. Um, you know, the big name powerlifting belts, you're never gonna see that issue, but some of the bodybuilding belts that you've seen, you know, the Gold's Gym belts with the pad on the back and stuff like that, the bodybuilding belts, those are the ones you see it most in. Um, so a lot of people, especially, let to get too far off topic, but um, double prongs kind of alleviated that problem. It, it, you don't have as much pressure on one hole. You have it spread out between the two holes. But uh, so double prongs are a pain in the butt if anybody's ever used double prong. Some people love them, it's kind of a cult following, I always I always kind of say, but double prongs, to get super tight and to get off has always been an issue. I don't know if you've ever used a double prong. I haven't. Um, they're not necessarily hard for the you know, pros and cons, the cons outweigh the pros. Um, the single prong, I've been asked if you can use it in a double and you can't because, you know, whenever you're putting it through, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but you're putting it through, one prong is resting on the roller part of the buckle, where your other prong would be either here or, you know, it would, have, it would actually have to be here and it wouldn't be used. Uh, so double prongs on Pioneer Cut are, are a no-go. So if anybody has any of those questions, that's the reason why you can't use them. But uh, the Pioneer Cut alleviates not only the problem of not tight enough or too tight, 
it also alleviates the problem of whenever you do get it on too tight, it's much much harder to get off. Well, the Pioneer Cut being able to get into that, you know, that certain tightness range down to a half an inch, you don't have the issue of getting it off. Matt, it sounds like if I were gonna summarize this, I would say that the shaft allows you to get your prong into and out of whatever hole you want much easier. It is, and it's because, but I think that really just is because you're not overly tight. <laughs> <laughs> there is so the sexual in you in, in the window there. Get the stuff I, I, I was trying to be professional here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You, your shaft goes into whatever hole that you want it to go. <laughs> um, so I think as a lifter, the reason why this is really, really awesome. First, what Matt was saying about how it's much easier to get off. I can't under. I can't overstate that, right? Like it's a hell of a lot easier to get this this belt on and off no matter what. The second thing is I think everybody's experienced the problem where either you're moving up or down a weight class, maybe you just ate or drank too much that day, the belt doesn't fit quite right, right? Like you're right in between the two holes. Totally gets rid of that problem as well. I think even if you don't have those problems on a regular basis, I have found the Pioneer Cut really, really awesome for my training because when I use the belt, I'm gonna start out by Matt was mentioning, right, intra-abdominal pressure, which is a huge function of the belt. It's gonna help you to build uh, and maintain that intra-abdominal intra pressure. But doing so really depends how you do it. It really depends on whether you're using a belt or not, and if you are, how tight the belt is. So one of the problems I've experienced is that I'll start out lifting, right, and I'll do my warm-ups without a belt, and then I'll put a belt on, and I'll feel really weird. And if I've done a long cycle of beltless training, it'll feel really, really weird. So generally what I do is each set, I'll try and tighten my belt a little bit more, a little bit more so that I can gradually get used to this feeling of generating intra-abdominal pressure with the belt, embracing with the belt correctly. That is doable with a prong. It's doable with a lever kind of, like you can leave the lever un unclosed and then close it and that gives you a little bit or you can take a screwdriver every set, that's a little overkill. This really solves that problem because I'm telling you, the half inch measurement, it feels like exactly wherever you want your belt, whatever tightness you want, you can get it exactly there. Even though it's, it's not like completely, uh, I guess you couldn't technically do every tightness there is in the world, right? Like that would be kind of like a slide mm -hmm. thing. For practical purposes, this is that solution, right? This gives right. you whatever flexibility and tightness you want. So, you know, I'll start out and I might have on my second warm up, I might have the belt on the very loosest setting, but by the time I get to my work sets, I have it on the very tightest setting or somewhere in between. And that in between is really, really crucial to performance and in, in my opinion. Yeah, so that was another thing to reiterate about the Pioneer Cut. There's there's some misconception that have, that's been come up on social media, emails and things of that nature that, you know, uh, what makes it different than say the SBD belt. The SBD belt, is it's well it's completely different to answer the question the SBD belt obviously is a lever action um, they're all set at one inch holes uh, the biggest difference here is that half inch holes versus the one inch holes so you still yes you do get the adjustability of your SBD belt not having to use the screwdriver they've done a great job of, of fixing that issue in, in powerlifting belts essentially uh, this one in my opinion um, and I don't know if you'll agree with me or not but it, it essentially makes the single prong irrelevant now, the normal single prong irrelevant now, because it functions just like a regular single prong, but it gives you the, the micro adjustments that we've talked about. So um, there's, there's no reason to go back to a single prong. Now there's been some chatter, I think on some of the forums, whether or not um, when the belt is being used because the holes aren't exactly in the center, if they're used on the bottom row versus the top row, you know, it could, you know, if it's on the bottom row, the top kind of folds over and the bottom of the top row, the bottom will kind of fold over. If it's here, you know, you've got a little bit more pressure on it I see. coming out this way. Um, minuscule and I think probably unnoticeable for 99% of the people out there. Ben is one of the more anal guys when it's talking about uh, Dude, I'm it's so over the top yeah. and I don't know. Like that's, oh, if you're getting yeah. into that level of detail, man, yeah. you're, you're, I wanted to know because it's, it's, it's yeah. been brought up on social media and via email, so I figured I would at least touch on it. But it, it's it's minuscule at best. But uh, any other foreseeable issues with this, we have not come across any. I mean, we've been out now for uh, with this design in the market now for I think since maybe April or May, so it's still fairly new. Um, but we've had nothing but great feedback on it. 
Um, in my experience, I'm able to get this just as tight as a lever belt because of that extra granularity. Uh, I think the only reason you would maybe go with a lever over Pioneer Cut is if you're a person who, for whatever reason, really, really struggles to get your belt tight enough. And I think this is typically like really, really large lifters kind of struggle with that. You might still prefer the lever, but that's the only situation where I can see where the lever would, would offer an advantage over the over the buckle, over, over this particular buckle. Yeah. And yeah, I have no idea why you would ever get a single prong or a double prong instead of this. There, uh, just, I can't think of a scenario where that would make sense. Not anymore. There, Not anymore. There really, since this came out, there's there's no real reason for at least a single prong. Double prongs, I think people, they feel like it's more secure in the buckle itself. Again, minuscule at best, and most likely really not there other than maybe psychologically. Yeah, I only got my Pioneer cut a couple months ago, so I haven't taken more than 600 with it, but I haven't seen the slightest indication yeah. that there's gonna be any problem. And uh, for the very few people who are maybe doing, you know, 800 pounds on squats and deadlifts on a regular basis, maybe, but I really don't, I, I doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it. So that kind of concludes our review. I'm gonna post this up along with a kind of written version if you guys would prefer to read and not watch the whole thing. I'll link that in the description below. You'll also be able to find it on Matt's, Instagram, or Matt's YouTube and social media. Yeah, I'll throw it um, on the website on the Pioneer too. stuff. And if you guys have questions, please let us know because I know that you know the more information we can get out there, the better. Uh, Matt's a really great guy. I highly, highly support him, but I'm not trying to, you know, just sing his praises needlessly. Like this is a really good product and I think it's something that everyone will benefit from. And so that's really the purpose behind this. So thanks for watching. Thank you guys. See you later.